Hello. This is a video that's going to describe NOE. And we can do this in a 1D experiment or a 2D experiment. So NOE is the nuclear overhauser effect. So it's often little n, big O, little e, because O is a person's name. Uh, no, it's the interesting thing about nosy is that it's the coupling between two nuclei. In this case, we're going to be looking at protons that are close in space. They may not be bonded to each other. So that's very different than anything you've seen before. So this is coupling through space and they have to be closer than about five angstroms. And this is a great tool for looking at isomers, whether it's stereoisomers, conformational isomers, or geometric isomers. So for example, this is a geometric isomer. There's not, um, there's not much rotation around this bond because of the conjugation. So that doesn't rotate. And so you could imagine there being two pretty distinct um, geometric isomers where the carbon where the methyl is next to the H, or if it's the other isomer where the methyl is uh, pointing more towards the ring. This is two different possible chair conformations. And this is actually, or sorry, this isn't chair conformation. This is two different stereoisomers where the hydrogen is axial in this stereoisomer, so it's da axial down, versus ax equatorial up. And so this will be much closer to this hydrogen, and you will probably see, because they're both pointing down similar to each other, you'd be very likely to see a correlation there. Whereas here, you might see, those aren't really pointing toward each other. You might see through the W coupling, but probably not. This one probably won't see much NOE. So in the 1D experiment, much like the 1D heteronuclear decoupling, you irradiate one peak, and it won't necessarily show coupling because you don't see the coupling in the proton NMR. And that other peak, trans it transfers the energy through space to the other proton, and that peak grows. So this is different from the, pro, the 1D heteronuclear decoupling because when we irradiated the peak, we saw the coupling collapse in the other peak. So it went from maybe a triplet to a singlet or something. But here we see that peak grew in size. So it's a different response, but it's the same type thing. And like the... Um, 1D experiment for the heteronuclear decoupling, we can do, we could just pulse the whole frequency range and get a 2D experiment. And this, in this case, that's called nosy or rosy, depending on how you set up the pulse sequence. In 1D, it was for the, or for the heteronuclear, we called that the cozy, right? That was the 1D and then the 2D was the cozy. So the 2D nosy is looking for things that are close in space. So the question on this is which of these two isomers is here based on the nosy? So we're looking at through space and we see that these things, this is our aromatic protons. Oh, okay, they're coupled to each other, no big surprise. But let's take a look at that methyl here at two. And who is it coupling to with the nosy? It's coupling out here to 10. That means it's coupling to the NH. It is not coupling to anything here, which you would expect for this, because those two are pointing to each other. So this can quickly tell you something about stereochemistry, geometric isomers, sometimes conformations if it's locked into one conformation. But I want to be clear, this can tell you about uh, relative stereochemistry. And relative stereochemistry means I could tell apart two diastereomers, but enantiomers are mirror images, so they're going to have the same nosies. So this is relative stereochemistry, diastereomers. And that, so in an upcoming video, we'll talk about how can I use NMR techniques to distinguish between two enantiomers, but this technique is not that.
great for geometric, great for conformations, great for diastereomers, relative, which is called relative stereochemistry. So another tool to help you figure out little bits of information about the molecules.